Well, welcome everybody here to St. Angela for this, our Lenten speaker series. This evening is our great privilege to have with us Bishop Mark Rivetuso, who is the Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of St. Louis. Uh, the bishop and I have a similar background. Obviously, he did better than I did. <laughs> he, was our, <laughs> he was ordained nine years after me. It means he's a young man. He's also better looking. You probably noticed that right away, too. For those of you who are from South St. Louis, you know, you'll know what I say when I say he was a dragon. Um, those of you from Northside, he means he went to St. Mary's High School. Um, he went to Cardinal Glennon College, Kenrick Seminary. He is currently residing at Annunciation Parish in Webster Groves. And he served the Archdiocese as Vicar General, and he is on more committees than I could remember. <laughs> and he serves the diocese exceedingly well. And we are very privileged that he would favor us with his presence and his words this evening. Bishop Ribbitoso. Thank you for that warm welcome. And it is a great joy to be here today for celebrating with you this Lenten reflection. And as we do so, I want to begin with prayer, uh, asking the Lord to bless our time together and opening our hearts and truly receiving Lenten graces to grow in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, our loving Father, we come before you in this Lenten season. It is your gift to us, for you call us to contemplate more fully the greatness of your love, your unconditional, sacrificial love in your Son, Jesus. Help us as we contemplate your beloved Son and how he redeemed us with that unconditional, sacrificial love, that we may truly be touched by the mystery and enter more fully into its meaning and practice the mystery of Christ in our life and come to know Jesus, come to love Jesus, and serve him by imitating the way of the cross, the way that leads to the joy of Easter. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to begin by reading a passage from St. Mark's Gospel. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here a while and pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer, is at hand. The topic of this Lenten reflection is the agony in the garden with Jesus and with us. And as we enter into this Lenten reflection, I want to ask all of us to pray that it will be a time where we receive graces to enter into, first of all, the mystery of Jesus, his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, to be with him and for Jesus as we enter more fully into his agony, his struggle, his embrace 
of the way of the cross for us and the resolve and the peace to truly accomplish his work as our Redeemer, but also to enter into that mystery so that we can come to know more fully the meaning of that mystery to be lived in our lives. How do we live Jesus in the agony in the garden? And I believe we should, as we're contemplating this subject matter, we're always reminded to pray and ask the Lord to be with us. Lord, help us enter into the mystery of your unconditional sacrificial love as we contemplate the agony in the garden. And as we do that, we enter into that mystery. And I ask us to truly open our hearts to enter into that mystery, the mystery of being one with Jesus in his agony, his time of distress, his time of being troubled, his time of truly struggling to embrace that way of the cross in life and to come, yes, to his resolve and peace to truly walk the way of the cross and show us the way of salvation, the way of redemption. How are we called to do that? Look to Jesus to enter into the mystery. And as we do so, we enter into him being, as it says in the gospel, troubled and distressed. We must enter into that troubled and distressed state of Jesus Christ. And in doing so, we will come to know what he is confronted with and how we are called to enter into the mystery of knowing our Redeemer more fully in our lives. Troubled and distressed because Jesus, in the agony in the garden, faces the enormity of sin, the enormity of sin. And to bear the weight of the enormity of sin is what he does for us and for the world. The enormity of sin. We should experience what is that enormity to truly come to know the unconditional sacrificial love of Jesus. The enormity of sin is all the hatred, all the violence, all the oppression against the poor and the vulnerable. It is in embracing all the lust, all the pride, all the envy, all the lies. It is truly embracing all the indignities from every age and humanity. It is in embracing and confronting our own sins as well. The enormity of sin, think about that, all those ages, the enormity of sin that Jesus takes upon himself, troubled and distressed because he is facing the weight of the enormity of sin and he truly embraces it out of unconditional sacrificial love. And I offer this first lesson to be reflected upon because as we come to know and enter more fully into the mystery of Christ in the agony of the garden, where he confronts and embraces the enormity of sin and bears that weight within his loving, merciful heart and the way of the passion, the way of the cross to the crucifixion, he bore that weight. And we are called to enter more fully into what the Lord has done for us and bearing the weight of the enormity of sin. And the reason why I emphasize this is because during Lent, we should grow more fully in holiness. And we want to grow more fully in holiness. We should enter into the holiness of Jesus. And Jesus, in the agony in the garden, and embracing the enormity of sin, yes, our sin, should touch and transform and change our lives and how we live our lives. And especially, as we see, as Jesus bore the weight of the enormity of sin, the one who was guiltless to stand for the guilty, the one condemned for us who should have been condemned, he bore that price. And we see the cost 
of our sins in him being our redeemer to redeem us from our sinfulness and when we enter into the mystery of the agony in the garden with Jesus we come to know his unconditional sacrificial love that touches transforms and changes our life because as we understand that more fully spiritually understanding what is happening there we come to know the graces of a greater sorrow for our own sin Lord I am so sorry for my sins I am so sorry that you endured the pain and suffering of the cross because of my sins and for the sins of humanity I truly by your grace the grace of repentance to turn from the way of sin because the way of sin is that of selfishness I want to embrace your way of centering my life upon you not my self-centeredness help me Lord to turn from my sin truly be sorry and make an amendment I want to live holiness of life and the graces of conversion of heart and life to turn my life once again over to the Lord and have him be the center, not my self-centeredness. Truly, we are called to enter into the mystery of Jesus in the agony in the garden because it helps us in that mystery to understand and live the mystery. We must have an understanding of the Lord who embraces the cost of our salvation, the cost and the weight of our sinfulness, and bears that resolve to go the way of the cross, to give us freedom from sin and new life in him. We are called, as we enter into the mystery of the agony in the garden, pray for those graces in Lent, that we may indeed have true sorrow for our sins, true repentance to turn from sin, true conversion of heart to have our hearts one with the Lord's heart and his desires to be our desires and to be one with the Lord and keep him at the center so that our life may be an imitation of his life. That's the first lesson, to learn the cost of our sins and to truly, from understand that more fully, in a spiritual way, enter into greater conversion of life, a holiness of life. But also, I believe as we truly understand that, we celebrate that on Good Friday especially. And I want to mention, usually in Good Friday liturgies, in many churches I've had those services, a certain hymn is sung, Were You There? A Great Negro Spiritual. Were You There? Were You There When They Crucify My Lord? Oh, were you there when they crucify my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? I thought instead of uh, uh, singing this, I thought you probably were doing enough Lenten penance, so I thought I wouldn't sing the hymn for you, so I did spare you that tonight. But the hymn is very important because it helps us to enter into what we're talking about here with the agony in the garden. Were you there? Yes, we were there. Because Jesus bore our sins. He was resolved to be our Savior, our Redeemer, in the agony of the garden. And we are called, remember, as we enter into that mystery, yes, like the hymn says, when we enter into that mystery, enter into Jesus and his own struggle, his turmoil and distress, we tremble, tremble, tremble. That's holy. Holiness knowing that the Lord truly embraces the way of the cross for us to redeem us. And we have a holy resolve with the Lord that what a blessing we have in Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer. And I know as we truly come to understand the cost, we also understand the price paid. And Jesus truly paid that price for us. A second lesson I believe that we really need to learn from this mystery of Jesus in the agony in the garden is to understand his resolve and to find in Jesus, as we all do, he is the one who is the model of our life. And we should always find in Jesus our inspiration, our strength, our courage to want to become like him. And we find the resolve in the agony in the garden 
Remember what Jesus says in the Agony Garden. Take this cup away from me if it's possible, but your will be done, not mine. He knows that he must follow the way of love, the way of unconditional sacrificial love, to reveal to us the unconditional love and mercy of God in our life. And he embraces that resolve and has a peace about himself that what he does for us is for the salvation of the world. What he does for us is to redeem us from our sinfulness. What he does for us is to deepen our sense of knowing how much God embraces us in our sinfulness to forgive us and to give us conversion and new life. And I always think that as Jesus faced this moment, which was overwhelming, remember, the enormity of sin, and just think of that ourselves when we enter into that mystery, thinking how unbearable that must be for Jesus. Oh my, to hear of all the sins, not only mine, everyone's sins, that he bore the weight of our enormity of sin in his heart and brought it to the crucifixion. We are called that as Jesus did that resolve and was at peace, he knew the strength of his father. He knew his father was truly sustaining him by love. And he truly embraced that way, trusting that God would accomplish our salvation, our redemption. And I bring this up because I know in all of our lives, when we enter into the mystery of the agony in the garden, for Jesus and with Jesus, that we are called, as I said, Jesus is our model. And Jesus is the inspiration, the strength and courage of our lives. And all of us are called, as Jesus lived out his plan of salvation, as the Blessed Mother lived out her plan of salvation, as all of us are called to live on our participation of the plan of salvation, to live our life for the greater good of what the Lord asks of each one of us to truly make this world a holier place, a more caring place, a more loving place, we look to Jesus. And remember, Jesus, in facing what was overwhelming, found a resolve and a peace in embracing the loving plan of the Father in his life to be our Redeemer. And I will say personally that I have found this in my own life, that there are times whenever I feel I am very much overwhelmed. I know when I received a call from the papal nuncio about being appointed as the auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of St. Louis, I know in that phone call, I was looking at the crucifix, and I was saying to my Lord from my heart, Lord, this is what you're asking of me. I trust that you will give me every grace I need to face every crisis, every challenge in the church, and to be a shepherd like you for your people. I trusted, I still trust. And I know recently in our times, uh, one of the committees that I'm on is for the United States Catholic Conference of Bishops for Child and Youth Protection. And obviously it's a committee that's doing a lot these days. Obviously we're truly involved with not only the protection of minors from uh, when we're obviously facing this crisis, the clergy sexual abuse crisis. We're not only talking about the protection, about the safeguarding of our minors, but also being there for victim survivors, being there for families, helping people in the midst of dealing with these crimes and sins that have happened, of the wounds within our church. And once again, overwhelming. It is seemingly unbearable. But I know with the Lord's graces, that only with him that I can truly face these things that I feel like I can't do alone. I have to have Jesus. And in my agony in the garden, Jesus helped me to be present to victim survivors and their families. Help me to do what is good for our children. Help me to truly safeguard our youth. Help me to continue to be about helping our church to continue to address this crisis Help us as a church, help me as a shepherd to be there for the church to help people to find healing and help. Help me to have the words I need to say 
so that people may be comforted by the Lord and find hope in Him. I have to trust and trust that the Lord was with me in my hour, as Jesus talks about His hour, this is the hour that I have been given. And Lord, I need you in my own agony in the garden. Help me where it seems overwhelming and unbearable. By your grace, all things are possible. And you can help me be the shepherd I need to be. And I would say, even in our own lives, pray about that. There are things that the Lord is asking of you and me. And asking of us for, like Jesus, living unconditional sacrificial love and i'll mention a few examples i think about those spouses that i have visited who are caring for another spouse with alzheimer's the unconditional sacrificial love that's there it may seem for them and i know i've heard from them many times overwhelming at times but their faith in jesus and their trust in him truly helps them in being present to their spouse and maybe a single parent i have been with many single parents who are caring for their children, of how that may seem at times overwhelming and unbearing, but the Lord in his grace helps them, helps them to truly be good and loving parents. And how often, I know in single, the people of single life, of those who are living out that single life dedicated to the gospel, of how difficult and overwhelming it may seem at times, living in a world that undermines the Christian values and principles that you are living. The Lord helps us when we feel overwhelmed. Trust in Him, and we know that we can embrace God's plan. As well as, I know children and teenagers, I know they have tremendous challenges living in the world today, and they, in making Christ choices every day, find that it's not always the most popular thing to do with their peers. It seems overwhelming. It seems unbearable, but the Lord gives them the grace to be Christ, to make those choices in life. And I know that so many that are suffering chronically or have terminal illness, that they have their crosses too. And it seems overwhelming, unbearable, but in the Father's plan of them, in their way of living the salvific plan of God in their life, they by grace are living, offering up that suffering for the good of others, for the salvation of our world. Many of us are living out God's plan. And we in our agony in the garden experiences are called to remember, first of all, we're not alone. Jesus is with us. He is the one who makes all things bearable. And when we face those things that are very difficult, like Jesus in the gospel, in his struggles, his distress, being troubled. We have those times as well in embracing God's plan for us of living out unconditional sacrificial love in a greater way for the greater good. We are sometimes troubled. We are sometimes in distress. We are sometimes struggling. Lord, be with me. I know you will be my inspiration, my strength, and my courage. You will help me to have the resolve and the peace of living out God's plan in my life and to live out that plan of unconditional sacrificial love. How beautiful that is. We're called to live that out in our lives. And I know as we come, knowing that the Lord is with us, we need to remember also that as we face our resolve and our peace in living out God's plan, we are called never to be embittered never to be resentful of that plan, but open our hearts to the graces to live the beauty of Jesus in our life. And as we live Jesus, we embrace that participation in God's saving plan that we have to do, that we are called to do, that we embrace with love that we want to do, and that we do it for the greater good beyond ourselves. Always we're called to have the right disposition. Not my will, but yours be done. How important that is for us to enter into the mystery of knowing Jesus as the example in the agony in the garden and his example to be embraced in our life as we face our agony in the garden moments of life, as we face in living and embracing 
God's plan of unconditional sacrificial love in our lives as well. And I believe as we enter into this beauty of the Lenten season, there are two things I think help us to be connected with the mystery and the meaning of Jesus in the agony in the garden. And I will offer these two spiritual devotionals, which you just did a few minutes ago, the way of the cross, the stations of the cross. How important that is, because remember that first lesson that we learned in the agony in the garden, as we pray the way of the cross, walking with Jesus, who embraces the way of the passion, the cross, which leads to the resurrection, we know that Jesus' resolve reminds us of the cost of our sinfulness. And as we celebrate and pray the stations of the cross, we enter more deeply into the mystery of Jesus' unconditional sacrificial love for us. That's something that we should contemplate daily. Contemplate how much the Lord loves us, his redeeming love. Pray the stations of the cross. Walk the way of the cross. Understand more fully and appreciate the blessing of Jesus, our Redeemer, who embraced the weight of the enormity of sin so we could be free of sin and truly free to live the grace life that the Lord brings us through his passion, death, and resurrection. Pray the way of the cross, how important that is. We must always follow the way of Jesus, imitate the way of Jesus. Remember, he is our model to be embraced, our inspiration, our strength, and our courage. The way of the cross helps us enter more fully into the mystery to live the mystery. And also, to live the meaning of the mystery is so important. You know, as we entered into that gospel of the agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, we're reminded what Jesus asked of his disciples in the garden. He says, stay awake and be with me for an hour to truly enter into being one with the Lord in a holy hour is so important. And I present it as a connection with the gospel, a connection with the mystery that we are called to be one with the mystery, one with Jesus in holy hours to make that part of our spiritual devotionals because if we have this devotion to our Eucharistic Lord of being before him as he is exposed in the Blessed Sacrament and truly before him gaze upon him and his resolve for us that he would walk the way of being our Redeemer so that we could be redeemed from our sins of gazing upon his unconditional sacrificial love so that we may remember his resolve and once again living the meaning of the agony in the garden for us what is the resolve that we need to have of what the father is asking of us in our participation in the plan of salvation what is the greater good that we are called to live in our life what is the lord asking of us of our life and how to live it and how to live it for others and as we were for the lord who truly asked us to be with him for one hour as we're resolved to be one with him, he strengthens us in our resolve of what the Father asks of each one of us. And remember, as the Father truly blesses us with our unconditional, sacrificial, loving plan, we are called to remember to go to Jesus. Jesus, help us to imitate you, to imitate your way of embracing our own unconditional, sacrificial, loving plan from the Father which is for the greater good, which is for the greater salvation of all in the world, to participate in your saving love for the saving love of all in the world today. Help me to embrace that plan. And as we gaze upon the unconditional sacrificial love of Jesus, his Eucharistic heart open before us, we pray for those graces. Help me to have the grace I need to imitate your unconditional sacrificial love Help me to trust in God's loving plan. Help me to truly understand how I'm called to embrace the way of Jesus in my life for others. Help me to find in my life by your grace that all things are bearable with your help and grace 
to offer up all for the good of others. And I believe as we truly come to do that, as we look upon the Eucharistic heart of Jesus, something very special happens because the Eucharistic heart of Jesus touches our hearts. And when that happens, our hearts are transformed and conforming to his heart. But in a way, we see a greater growth in our hearts because the capacity of our hearts for God's plan, our heart grows. Our heart is truly widened and it has a greater capacity for living Christ's unconditional sacrificial love. How beautiful that is. When we find that in our daily life, in our own living of the agony in the garden, we live Jesus in our life and his greater good in our life, always seeking to bring the salvific love of Jesus to others and to live out God's plan knowing that it is one with Jesus will transform the world to be holier and will be more evident of being redemptive in its image as we live in the world bringing forth the beauty of our Savior. I know as we come to our conclusion of this uh, talk, I want to uh, ask for the Lord's blessing because one, I want us always to remember, enter into the mystery of Jesus, contemplate the mystery of Jesus every day of our life, and especially in our Lenten journey, contemplate the mystery of the agony in the garden, which helps us to understand the unconditional sacrificial love of Jesus for each one of us, and the resolve and the peace and the example he gives us in embracing the way of the cross to free us from sin, the cost of our sin, the redemption of our sin, in such a blessing of the Redeemer. We are so blessed in Jesus, our Redeemer. We should never take him for granted. Thank him daily for the blessing of his redemptive love in our lives. What beautiful love it is. A beautiful love that touches our hearts to know the redemptive love of Jesus in our life. And also, as we remember this Lenten reflection, that the mystery must always have meaning, that the mystery is to be lived in our life. And as we contemplate Jesus, it is a contemplation of who we are called to reflect in our life. As we contemplate the way of Jesus, we contemplate our way of living Jesus and God's plan for us. And as we find at times, maybe that plan may be unbearable, overwhelming, remember the meaning. Jesus is with us. We're not alone. And Jesus will be our inspiration, our strength, and our courage. May the Lord truly bless us to enter more fully into the beauty of our Lenten season. May we come to know more fully the beauty of our Redeemer and his love for us. And may we come to more know more fully the beauty of our own imitation of Jesus as we live out our resolve to live the Father's loving plan in our life and the mystery of Jesus and the agony in the garden. I want to conclude with a prayer asking the Lord to bless us and help us to truly know the blessing of living the way of Jesus. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time of reflection, of contemplation upon you as our Redeemer. May we always come to you with grateful hearts for the blessing of you who come always to reveal yourself as our loving and merciful Savior as you remind us of your redemptive love in the Lenten season. Help us as we enter into the mystery of your redemptive love to be touched by that redemptive love. Receive your graces in this holy season so we may repent of all sin, have true sorrow, and a, contr a contrite heart to be steadfast in turning from sin and to once again turn back to you. Help us by your graces to live conversion of heart and life so we may live your plan of love, of saving love in our lives and to live the way of the cross for ourselves with you. May you always be with us, strengthen us, and be our inspiration. And may we always embrace you 
as the model and way of living our lives. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for this time.